In September, New York awarded more than $16 million to five long-duration energy storage projects, with the bulk of the money going to fund a hydrogen project at an upstate nuclear power plant. For more on this investment, including an explanation of what pink hydrogen is, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room in the studio by Doreen Harris, President and CEO of the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. Welcome back to the show, Doreen. It's great to see you in person. Thank you for having me. So let's get right to it. Um, In order to drastically reduce our energy emissions in the future as required by state law, we're going to need technological advances. And this includes in the energy storage space, which can take many different forms. And to that end, uh, the state is going to spend $12.5 million at a nuclear power plant in Oswego County, where you're hoping to demonstrate, quote, nuclear hydrogen fueled peak power generation. Now, me and my liberal arts degree, obviously I know what that means, uh, but for others, uh, potentially for the listener, uh, what does that mean, Doreen? Well, I'm happy to, to try to dissect all this for you, but in the broadest of senses, what we are investing in at NYSERDA and and specifically with this project are technologies that we know we are going to need Mm -hmm. in the future when we start to exceed past our 2030 goals into 2040 and 2050. We're going to need technologies like those that are being demonstrated at Nine Mile Point to really achieve not only the grid of the future, but the reliable grid of the future. And so we invest heavily in innovation. And in this case, the RFP that resulted in the award you're referring to was for long duration energy storage. And so what that means is storage of energy that lasts past the period of time that we really see with typical chemistries that are used today, like lithium ion batteries, as an example, which maybe would last two to four hours to discharge whatever energy they've stored. Whereas the hydrogen application that we're talking about um, that we awarded um, from this RFP and other technologies that were awarded are really looking at durations far beyond that. In some cases, being able to store energy for days. And the reason we need that, of course, is because we have a future in which um, we have a highly renewable future, wind and solar. People always say the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. So we need a future grid that has technologies like these to help sort of balance those renewables as well. So you're basically what? Taking nuclear energy, turning it into hydrogen, and then potentially converting that back into some sort of usable form of electricity? See, you're, you're selling yourself <laughs> short. It's genius uh, for sure. But yeah, essentially what what is being actually accomplished now increasingly so at Nine Mile Point in Oswego, is the utilization of nuclear power to produce hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So the Department of Energy had funded an electrolyzer at that site um, a a bit of time ago. An electrolyzer is essentially using excess nuclear power um, to... Is that what's in Gatorade? (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Electrolysis. No, uh, electrolytes. Yeah. No, it's close. It's close, I would say. In this case, um, we at NYSERDA are building on the investments from the federal government to take the hydrogen that is produced by the electrolyzer and to use fuel cell technologies to actually convert it back into electricity and into other forms for use. Now, why is this important? It's important first to demonstrate that this can happen in a cost-effective manner, and further that this could provide a means by which to create that level of storage that I was talking about at the beginning, because hydrogen can be stored for any amount of time um, until it is converted back into electricity, as opposed and and utilized um, really whenever it would be needed. So it's using molecules to store energy, basically, instead of electrons. So if you're able to demonstrate that this is a cost-effective energy storage technique, is this something then we would like to expand to other nuclear power plants in New York? Well, I know the nuclear power plants would very much like to expand um, in this regard. I mean, it is seen as a particularly interesting application for hydrogen production for states that have a large amount of nuclear power Mm -hmm. um, production. So in New York State, we get about 30% of our electricity from nuclear power. So it's a big contributor 
to the grid at the moment. I think the question really becomes, in a highly renewable future, balanced by that nuclear power, how can the nuclear power be used most effectively to balance those renewables? And this is, this is a way to do that. This is a situation that I, I really want to be clear is also one that is bolstered by the federal investments that we're seeing. Okay. Um, we've talked in before, and I want to note that we have this, I would say, uh, gift from the federal government in the form of $500 billion of investments in clean energy. You know, they're looking seriously and in investing in not only hydrogen technologies, but also nuclear power as a facilitator for renewable energy. And so as such, I think New York is uniquely poised to really maximize leverage um, of those federal dollars as well. So according to a National Grid page I was reading, hydrogen exists in a range of colors with pink hydrogen generated through electrolysis powered by nuclear energy. Do you have a favorite color of hydrogen either because of the way it's generated or just because it's your favorite color? (laughs) You, you have to know my favorite color is always green. Really? Come on. Even just, though you're decked out in purple today. I know, but, uh, but no, literally our focus at NYSERDA and as a state is, is what we would deem clean hydrogen mm-hmm. production. So that would constitute electrolysis by renewable energy. Okay. So that's green, green hydrogen. Um, and that's on brand, green. Exactly, right? Or um, pink hydrogen as this investment at Nine Mile um, would be an example of pink hydrogen. But either way... The key for us is to produce hydrogen in a way that creates no emissions. And so other forms of the rainbow of of colors of hydrogen production really struggle from the perspective of methane emissions in particular. And, And in New York, methane, carbon emissions and the like are really not areas where we want to focus on given the objectives we have under the climate law. So when we think about hydrogen and specifically the work that we're going to be doing, um, we hope and expect to leverage federal funds. Mm -hmm. We have announced previously that we're partnering um, six states and 60 private companies are working together with NYSERDA leading an application to host a hydrogen hub in the U.S. Northeast. Actually, the federal government just issued the funding opportunity the other mm, couple weeks ago. And we're hard at work really getting a concept paper um, issued by November and and ultimately to compete and, of course, win what looks to be up to $7 billion of federal money, all focusing in our our application on clean hydrogen, i.e. pink or green hydrogen. Well, for listeners just joining us, you're listening to the Capitol Press Room, and we're speaking with Doreen Harris, president and CEO of the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. Uh, And included in that $16 million plus investment that I mentioned at the top was uh, $2.7 million uh, to test whether zinc hybrid technology is economically competitive with lithium ion technology. If it is competitive, what does that mean? And should I be investing in in zinc technology (laughs) right now? Would you like to do some insider trading with me? Why is this exciting? Well, different chemistries are a very interesting um, area of research Mm -hmm. and development associated with batteries in general. So this application um, by Borrego is, as you said, a zinc hybrid cathode energy storage system. The key here is, first of all, different chemistries mean you have different source uh, materials that you can utilize, um, which is important. Um, there's, There's specific challenges with sourcing these materials and Diversifying those sources are important um, in the first instance. There's also the topic of um, the duration of the application. I mentioned two to four hours tends to be the types of duration of lithium-ion batteries. This particular application looks to be able to at least be a six-hour duration in application. So that's good. More time is good. And then also the ability to install these technologies in very dense urban areas, in this case in, into New York City, Con Edison Service Territory. Um, we want to make sure we have technologies that can be cited in those, techno- in those regions of the state um, and do so safely as well. So um, a huge opportunity to clean up the air in New York City and to do so with some technologies we're, that we're excited to demonstrate as well. So when you think about these investments, investments made previously, 
how far are we, or maybe we're already there, uh, toward achieving our goal of, I think, installing 3,000 megawatts of energy storage by 2030? Yes, yeah, so energy storage um, is really a linchpin to achieving the other goals of the Climate Act. And in fact, Governor Hochul has called on us to expand that three gigawatt goal to six. We're in the midst of a regulatory filing mm -hmm. to, to lay out a path to do so. We have a situation where that number is actually going to need to grow um, probably by an order of magnitude when we get into 2040 and 2050 on the order of 50 gigawatts of energy storage really necessary to balance that grid of the future. So as we sit today, we have just, I think it's 1.3 gigawatts of, of energy storage in our pipeline. This is another place where we see a huge amount of federal leverage being tremendously useful. There's new tax credits that were part of the Inflation Reduction Act that are really game changers for the energy storage industry. And I feel very confident um, not only in, in reaching the governor's goals, but frankly, the broader industry advancement necessary to achieve the longer term goals as well. Is this an area where you envision growth along the line of like a hockey stick or is this akin to incremental growth? So certainly with any policy that we build, we have to do so in a way that has market certainty and durability to really allow it to grow at a reasonable pace. So we are not uh, certainly expecting uh, to wait until 2049 to install all of our energy storage. But at the same time, I do see that industry accelerating with respect to adoption. So it's probably not a hockey stick and not a straight line either, somewhere in between in which We've really seen this momentum, this market momentum, take off um, in the last couple of years, and, and I would expect it to grow. And in terms of achieving that future and how we go about doing it, when do you anticipate we'll have a revised or an updated roadmap for the state's energy storage plans? Well, um, actively uh, putting the finishing touches on that as we speak. Um, we were well on our way and frankly had to double back with the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act mm -hmm. because it is truly a game changer with respect to costs, um, i.e. costs for New Yorkers. Significant improvements because of the IRA and, and very necessary to double back and, and make sure we had um, our numbers right and the policy frameworks cor correct as well. So I'd expect to file that certainly by the end of the year. And is that something where we're going to be constantly updating the roadmap because of changes at the federal level, because of revised goals uh, from whoever's governor in the future? Definitely so. Um, these, are, these are policies that um, necessarily need to evolve due to the dynamic market in which we're working, even this summer's example of the IRA but also the, the advancement of new technologies. As I said, um, the demonstrations of today are going to become the deployments of tomorrow. So our one megawatt project at Nine Mile Point may, may become a 100 megawatt project in the future, and we really need to adapt to that. Finally, because of the evolving scope of the work that you're doing, do you envision that NYSERDA, which has been growing with its staff in recent years, is going to need to continue to grow, or have you reached the level of staffing that you'll need for the foreseeable future? Well, certainly NYSERDA, as, as time has gone on, is, is playing a more and more um, visible and I would say impactful role in, in not only leading our work in implementing the climate law, but frankly leading the work on behalf of other states in really designing policies and programs mm -hmm. that can help achieve our goals. Um, so for those reasons, there are areas I expect incremental growth um, in NYSERDA right now. Um, we're, we're looking at in increasing the size of our large-scale renewables team, as an example, to help get all these projects advanced and built. These types of technologies, like hydrogen, like long-duration storage, maybe nuclear technologies of the future, those are all areas where I expect NYSERDA to, to, to necessarily grow to support what is a really exciting time as we advance not only new technologies, but the scale necessary um, to achieve our state's goals. Well, we've been speaking with Doreen Harris. She's the president and CEO of the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. Doreen, thanks for visiting us at the Capitol. Thanks for having me.
Is your business, agency, or service interested in delivering your message to more than two dozen radio stations statewide carrying Capital Press Room? If so, visit capitalpressroom.org to contact our underwriting team.